I recently sold my Velomobile. What's a Velomobile? Well, it's one of these. Essentially, it's a recumbent tricycle, but with an aerodynamic monocoque body instead of a frame. It's like a bike, but with almost no air resistance, so, when powered by a fit rider, they can be very, very fast. My first opportunity to deliver mine to its new owner was at the British Human Power Club's race meeting at Darley Moor in Derbyshire at the end of August. While I was there, I thought I'd get some video of these amazing machines racing on the circuit. Among the riders was Russ Bridge, who besides turning in some seriously fast laps in his yellow streamliner, was getting in some preparation with a different bike named 77. His team are shortly taking it to attempt a record at Battle Mountain, Nevada, in the US. I'm Russell Bridge, so I'm the rider and builder of this. So Barney's helped me build it, but it's, it's mainly me. So we're going for the British land speed record, human powered land speed record, which is currently 76 and a half mile an hour. So I need to do 77 basically, hence the bike's called 77. Um, so we're doing final test. The bike, the bike gets crated up tomorrow and then goes, gets picked up and flies to America a week ahead of us. So the event is in Battle Mountain, Nevada. So we fly out to San Francisco it's a five mile run up and then you're timed over the final 200 meters of the course so you build up over four or five minutes and then an all-out sprint at the end to try and try and get that top speed so i've done battle mountain i've done the event um three times before this year i've i've done reasonable training for it before this year i've put 10 hours a week of training into this this year so this is as much as i can do whilst whilst doing a full-time job and and uh, maintaining relationships with uh, uh, loved the ones, uh, loved <laughs> ones, and everyone else here. Yeah. Right. So I'm, uh, I'm at best a, a, a fit amateur cyclist. The record's held by Ken Buckley. He's a professional cyclist. He's done one of the fastest ever 25 mile time trials in this country. He's a very, very fit cyclist. He did it with uh, with um, yeah. Uni yeah. University of Liverpool. A bike called Arian. I'm quite good at kind of optimizing absolutely everything so i think that's where we've we've we can maybe beat them it's by it's by leaving no stone unturned in terms of preparation nutrition what we refine on the bike like the, the camera pod is smaller this year the, the openings around the front wheel the chains waxed both wheels are now fully enclosed i don't think we could have done anything more on the bike Last time you did 74, almost 74, 73, 96. Yeah, yeah. So we've done we've done almost 74 mile an hour. So I need to find three miles an hour basically this year. Which but, is but, hard. But, at those but they're speeds. the hard three yeah. miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it two cameras because of redundancy? Yeah, yes. yeah. So there's there's so navigation. So if you look, so there's two there's two screens. So the main the but the large one is the main screen. The smaller, higher one is the backup screen. Yeah, so they're drone cameras. It's really low latency. The reason it's a video navigation screen is because we're trying to keep laminar airflow as far back on the bike as possible. So if you put a windscreen on the bike further forward, the tiny seam between the bike and the windscreen is enough to trip the laminar airflow. <laughs> Thirty-five. Yeah. That's the back of the, the, the screen. 
So a fortnight yesterday is scrutineering. So someone's got... Is, is someone designated to catch it? Bard! <laughs> <laughs> the rider of a bike like this can't just stick his feet out and put them on the ground, so when stationary, it will fall over if it's not held up by helpers. And likewise, it needs to be caught by helpers when it comes to a stop. Having done a quick test without the lid and the cameras and screens in place, it was time for a full-on dress rehearsal with the lid on. Squall. Oh, missed. OK. Walking. Pedalling. Running. It feels like a shimmy on the front end. Right, you've got balance in the wheels again. <laughs> well, maybe. I mean, they do need 100%. This one's better though because the it's much it's much thinner. So I'm actually pedalling in a straight line rather than, oh, okay, yeah. rather than yeah. pedalling bow-legged. Yeah, there's a little white mark that goes on the back of the foam line. He was like, I know exactly what car you want. We haven't got one here. We've got one in a different branch of the gear in half an hour. Before. So what we've just done here is um, a few tests up and down the main straight at Darley Moor. So the main thing we're practicing is starting and stopping because that's the hardest bit. Once you're going, it's it's relatively easy. Um, and then the last test we did was, I don't know, 600 metres down the main straight up to about 35, 40 mile an hour just to check that the bike is all okay. Which it is. There's a little bit of a speed shimmy in, which I'm not sure what that is yet, but we're we're taking a backup fork with us to back up the Battle Mountain, so it might be the new fork that I've made. I'm slightly nervous about that. <laughs> so we're getting there two days early, um, which will allow us a couple of days to acclimatise at the at the high altitude, which I think we'll need, and just try, kind of try and relax into it. Hopefully the bike all turns up all right. This is the biggest the biggest unknown now, is handing it over to other people and hoping that they do the job and the bike shows up where it says it's going to show up. 90% of the job is done by the time you've actually time you're actually sat on the start line ready to go. Like most of the job is done and it's just then it's just going fast for five minutes. Just going fast. <laughs>